So what is cognitive generation? I just want to check whether you saw the workshop notice and you know what you're attending. Alzheimer's. Why did you say Alzheimer's? Because it's cognitive degeneration. Okay, that's one of them. It's a spectrum of illnesses. Which other one? What comes to mind? I forgot your name. Shahid. Shahid. What else comes to mind, Shahid? We listed it on the invite. Basically, beginning of dementia, that your brain started to degenerate and then it can cause dementia. Exactly. So it leads to a lot of different outcomes. Yeah. And what is going to drive those outcomes? Because for some people, it might show up as MS. For some people, it might show up as dementia. For some people, it might show up as Alzheimer's. What? Why? Is it showing up as different things? Because at the core is cognitive de degeneration. So let's talk about cognitive degeneration. What is cognitive degeneration? What is happening? I want to hear your thoughts. So cognitive is thinking thoughts, right? No, what not just thinking. It's an ability, an ability to function, yes. It's yeah, to think and to act reasonably. <laughs> Not the right thing, there's no right thing to do anything, right? So the degeneration of it, guys, can we pay attention? We're not here to whisper and talk. Okay, please pay attention. Okay, this is class. <laughs> this is not an adult yes. session. <laughs> okay, so the degeneration is that, you know, there is a normal, and we can measure that in different ways, and then there is the abnormal. And we are saying that it's degenerating from a normal to an abnormal. And at the core of what's actually happening here is what we are calling neural inflammation. Okay, we already know that word. We're very familiar with that word, inflammation. Jad, where, what causes... We agree not to <laughs> pick on you. Yes. Now, I'm not picking. You just look like a likely person to call. <laughs> yeah, I'm not being biased. <laughs> so what are Beate, what is at the core of inflammation? Why not you? It's a very important question. What is at the core? What is at the core? Dr. Noel, what is at the core of inflammation? What where is it coming from? The gut. Yes. Oh yeah, you see, she's a doctor, she's going to go deep. <laughs> now she's really lost us. Okay, but so at the core is really an issue of the gut. And so when the gut is compromised, that's why we talk about the gut brain. There's some paperwork I'm going to share with you. When we talk about the gut brain connection, everything in our body is actually metabolism driven, right? everything, even our rhythms, meal time, the sun, all of that really drives the overall rhythms of the body. So at the core is, so what happens in the stomach that begins this issue of inflammation? We've talked about the five causes of disease. Can we go back and look at those five causes? Because within those causes, we're going to capture a couple of things. What are the five causes? Number one, Elizabeth? Food. Um, what about the food? Oh, no, no. It's toxic. It's, uh, the, uh, the okay, toxicity is a different issue. Okay. Because not just food is toxic, the air is toxic too, and the water. Right. So toxicity. Number two, okay. Beate? Stress. No, stress is not one of the causes of disease. It's part, it's a something that arises from the original causes. What else? You said food. What was it about food you were looking at? Okay.
Okay, nutrients. So it's nutrient deficiency, right? Number three? Lack of sleep. No. <laughs> Something causes lack of sleep. You don't just like, I'm not going to sleep. <laughs> Something is making you not sleep. So these are original causes. The things at the beginning that actually cause. They're causal. They, there's no dependence. No, relationships don't cause anything. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. It is, hey, no, that's an important point. It is your reaction to the relationship. Relationships don't cause anything. It's how you react to the relationship. So we're talking about original things that come in and cause things, right? So I want to just take a step back because what she's just said is very important and a lot of people make mistakes about that. Thanks. Right? A lot of people make mistakes between stimuli and response. These two things are not connected. Stimuli is not connected to response. There's a stimuli and you choose how to respond. In between stimuli and response is choice. That's why bad relationships have nothing to do with you. It's how you respond to it. Are we clear about that? Because a lot of people are reactive. So if you react to a bad relationship, that's you reacting. The relationship has nothing to do with how you respond, right? Because in a bad relationship, you can respond very well, or you could respond badly, or you could have no reaction. I'm kind of surprised that stress is not one of the causes. No, because stress is a response choice. Yes. Okay. <laughs> stress is not you don't you see babies have stress? No. <laughs> exactly. But babies can be affected by toxicity, they can be affected by nutrient deficiency. What else? So think about babies. Don't think about your very complicated lives. <laughs> think about babies. What else could cause disease in a baby? Your name is? Shane. Shane. What, what else do you think could cause disease in a newborn baby? Um, I think they just have like a weak um, immune system. Uh, no, they, ju they don't come with weak immune systems. DNA. Their immune system is developing. DNA? Uh, their genetic risk. What else? We have one or two more, but I'll go with one last one. What else? Thank you. Infections. So I said think about babies. Right? Really, those are some of the four things. There's another one we could add, but those are really the four things that cause illness. Chronic illness. Those are the four things. What's so fifth? I'm not going to tell you. You're going to tell me. Oh. I gave you notes on it before. What do you think it is? We'll find out. We'll find out. So, but let me go to where I was going. So, these things. No, it's not. <laughs> Thank you, President. <laughs> and that was not it. So, these things actually are the underlying issues of why we move from a normal brain to an abnormal brain. So, let's take specific issues here like a nutrient deficiency or infections. The real core of where infections get into our body is through our gut. And therefore, our gut has what? Close to 80 to 90 percent of our underlying immune architecture. Because that is the biggest invasion of foreign invasion into the bioarchitecture. Right? And therefore, uh, as you've learned in this class, that's where we spend a lot of time actually looking at your gut architecture. So my notes are now here. Let's distribute this. So you didn't make enough copies. All right, so let's start on the first page. 
itself and that's what we've been going through the number one as you can see there is called inflammatory triggers right you can see number one right yeah. and the inflammatory triggers are actually coming from where the no that whole passage is the gut oh. can you look at the picture properly <laughs> the mouth your mouth doesn't extend all the way down there right? <laughs> the source yeah it comes from no she's right it comes from the mouth yes thank you I get the point now sorry so and, and not that it comes from the mouth so it's a combination of things right so when toxic things come in when there's an underlying genetic risk itself in how you actually deal with that for example she said babies have a, a weakened immune it's not that they have a weakened immune they have an undeveloped immune system right that's why they are it's very easy for them to get infections it's not that they are weak it's an undeveloped and especially infections causes inflammation right so look at number two what does it say intestinal inflammation and permeability what's the big thing we've learned about permeability I know I'm using big language and we're in America where people don't really have a good vocabulary so what is permeability who knows what the word means not from you I want to hear from you okay. what's permeability correct to leak or drain through something else yes. right and why is that a problem is permeability a good thing or a bad thing could good and spawn it depends because the stomach wall should be permeable only to the good things right but if it is that permeability is violated by what we call the junctions opening and other things come in that are not supposed to come in then we have an inflammatory response so I want you to think about inflammation not like you get a wound or something but we're not thinking at really serious inflammation so you went out to dinner and you had a bad meal and most times you might not even know you what you were eating was bad and it gets into your stomach so you can imagine the war that rages the minute that gets to your stomach right immediately your overall immune system knows that there is a massive attack and you're not even aware of it right then it goes into what we call systemic inflammation I'm not going to talk about the other one if not we'll get lost there and when it becomes a systemic inflammation which is persistent or chronic that means that you keep doing the same thing like you keep eating gluten continuously even though gluten is not good for you then your body keeps reacting why is gluten a problem in our bodies mm. our bodies can't digest it why not I'm not sure uh, where do you find gluten do you know okay good and why can our body not digest gluten <laughs> okay <laughs> that's true but, but why can our body not digest it i don't like that answer okay well how how we're how we're our bodies not made to digest gluten gluten grows normally as a plant as a food it grows in our food. It's not a man-made substance. That's correct. 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 That's the point. It's a, the underlying DNA of the the biochemical architecture of the gluten here, and that it pervades the world through those seeds then affecting people didn't have the reaction to gluten 50 years ago so it's an emergent issue and that's why the pizza in italy is better than the <laughs>
the pizza anywhere else is better than here. Yeah, it's just the type of gluten. It's like sugar also. It's a type of sugar. Yeah, okay, no, it's not GMO. It's just a biochemical issue. Then it now leads to what we call, so let's follow the diagram, into the blood-brain barrier permeability. Um, how then does this inflammation get into the brain? Beate. <laughs> I've taught you before that, uh, but the blood doesn't go to the brain. There's no blood in the brain. No, there's no blood in the brain. How does it get to the brain? I don't need people to be whispering. We're in class. How does the inflammation get to the brain? Any idea? By passing through the blood brain barrier. How does it pass through the blood brain barrier? That's Thank you for reading that. How does it pass through the blood brain barrier? The blood is the one that transport all the food in you and including food into the, to the brain. Uh, very good. So when the gut walls, the junction, they call it the junction, where the permeability issues are, when that is compromised, all the bad stuff escapes into the bloodstream and now it goes to the brain blood barrier and it does the same thing that it has done in that barrier if the junctions open what are the things that are allowed into the brain and nutrients and fat right because blood doesn't go into the brain so that barrier is a very very important barrier that allows only certain things so when infection and other things toxic things violate that barrier you know how double levels of inflammation you have gut and neuroinflammation and cognitive de degeneration starts at that point are we clear on this that's where it comes from from the gut okay are we clear let's go to the next slide were you going to ask a question oh okay so let's just look at that's what i've just been talking about on the next page this page aging hippocampus what's the hippocampus google so that you will not forget what is the hippocampus look at the things that we've been talking about neuroinflammation we now understand right Beate if I asked you what neuroinflammation was no 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 I, I'm no no yeah you can check it later just make a note you can check it later so when I ask you what neuroinflammation is you should be able to tell me right where it came from <laughs> obviously from the inflammation of the gut and why was there inflammation in the gut in the first place guys it's important that you remember this because when prasan starts giving you recommendations you need to understand why the gi products are very necessary for you to resolve that underlying inflammation you understand there is no way we can go solve anything in the brain without addressing the underlying compromise in the gut you need to understand that. So you can test for inflammation in your gut? Test. Yeah, we, we've run that test already for you. Okay. Didn't we do that with your stool test? Okay. <laughs> no, none of us is okay. okay. Yeah. Was she okay? Uh, we don't want to discuss your okay. private test. 
but nobody there are very few people who are okay if you have not really addressed your underlying gut integrity if you don't have any pain or any issues then you could say your gut is healthy your cons your, your your stool frequency is good you take your digestives you take your probiotics you are cool on all of that then we can say that your gut integrity is recovering or is back intact in place and that's very important and so uh, if you also look at things like oxidative damage that's what uh, dr noel was talking about and cellular senescence or protein aggregation i can we can mention a lot of things but see the things that begin to happen it's called neurogenesis or synaptic plasticity dendrite loss and all of that which then begins to cause a lot of the hippocampal atrophy what's atrophy it's the dying of that architecture that you just described for us and there's the cognitive impairment and then there is this collection of things that dr noel would call neuropathologies ms autism schizophrenia dementia all of those arrive from that okay are we very clear questions before we move forward any questions any concerns so let's take an example of symptoms of cognitive impairment in ms there's a short-term memory deficit i just want to give an example of the kinds of things that would happen there's problems with abstract conceptualization there's attention deficit and there's slowed information processing so we looked at the aging hypocamas and these are the kinds of things that would resolve specifically right let's look at the next pages and we look at a couple of different things uh, open your page let me see where you are just want to make sure it was copied properly now we want to look at the six subtypes of alzheimer's so we're taking a particular disease type and we want to look at six subtypes right so there are many types of alzheimer's right and so let's explore it because a lot of people think it's just one so look at what it says here understanding the different alzheimer's subtypes is also critical for creating the best treatment plan for each patient there are numerous metabolic processes involved in contributing to alzheimer's with six different subtypes that have been identified by dr bradison so let's look at these six sub subtypes because we actually dr Yi is licensed for the bradison protocol which is the protocol for reversal for uh, alzheimer's right so let's look at the different subtypes so you begin to see that the underlying connection between the gut and neurogeneration or neuroinflammation is a very critical metabolic issue right so look at the first type patients with this form of have predominantly inflammatory symptoms we've spoken about inflammation right it's as dr noel was saying to me this morning inflammation is our biggest challenge right dr noel it's our biggest challenge it's a fight against an ecosystem that is trying to kill us right toxicity nutrient deficiency most people will tell you i eat well yeah okay um, genetic risk most people don't know their genetic risk and then we have infections which is around us everywhere we carry it everywhere we go right and as i was saying to somebody we've outsourced most of our life our water we outsourced our air we outsourced our food we outsourced everything is outsourced nothing is original so we live in an uncontrolled environment for toxicity and infections so there's a lot of big words here right so these pro-inflammatory factors that include all of these things right are actually causing so patients with subtype 1 have increased levels of c-reactive protein which we measure in your blood test the c-reactive protein is a key marker for inflammation we also look at the interleukin 6 and then we look at the albumin to globumin ratio 
Okay? So that continues. Let's go to the next one, which is subtype 1.5 on the next page. You can read all of this in. We call this the glycotoxic or sweet Alzheimer's. The subtype is the in-between of subtype 1 and 2 because it involves inflammatory and atropho atro atrophic processes. So glucose regulation is impaired. So this is the one that is mostly connected with diabetes, right? So there's an insulin resistance component here that is on the rise, including the inflammation issues, right? And we know that insulin resistance is a challenge that most of us face, right? Because we, most of us have impaired carbohydrate metabolism. Why do we all generally have impaired carbohydrate metabolism? Is that making sense, guys? A very simple issue. So people who run every day, you see them all lean. You see those guys who run marathon? Their BMI is about 17. So if you have that level of activity, you're going to be that thin and very healthy because that is really how this architecture was built for that kind of level of activity every day. So the sedentary issue and our consumption of carbohydrates is the biggest challenge. So what is the simple solution around this kind of architecture? Exercise. Well, you know, exercise cannot solve the problem because the amount of carbohydrate is compromised. You see, those in the olden days, they didn't eat a lot of the complex things that we're eating. They don't eat carbohydrates. No, they did. But, but, but very small amount of it. Yeah, but they were moving. The solution is actually why there's such an emergence of Mediterranean and ketogenic diets. Diets that are moving away from carbohydrates. Because you cannot solve the exercise issue. You're not going to be running five miles every day. <laughs> None of us can do that. Right? So, moving away from the overwhelming levels of carbohydrate really addresses that underlying constraint. Almost everything around our lives is carbohydrate driven, right? People put sugar in tea, uh, the, the corn even is too sweet, it's not natural because it's been GMO conditioned to have too much sugar, the popcorn, the soda, the salad dressing, I could just go on. Everything is sugar driven, right? Yeah. So let's go to the third type which is the toxic type, Alzheimer's type 3, is called by, caused by toxin exposure. Let's go back. What, what, what was I saying? So if you begin to see each of the Alzheimer's type is mapped to a lot of these disease causes, right? Some are from nutrient deficiency, right? We're eating more of something than the other, so there's no balance and we're sedentary. Some is genetic, we're going to look at that, but now some are infection, that causes inflammation, and then we're talking about this type that is toxic. So you're going to eat that. It talks about fungal growth and other things. Fungal particles could be also detected in the neurons of AD. So that's, yes. I'm sorry. Here there is only four causes of the... Yeah, I so said I'm going to tell you the fifth oh, one. Okay. And if you tell me, you will win a prize. No, I don't want to. You don't want to win prize? <laughs> yeah. You're exiting from the prize? Yeah. All right, number f uh, number type number four. You're following me. Yes. 
is the vascular one in this develop there's a protective response to vascular insufficiency and results in a triggered amyloid response the vascular insufficiency is the supply of nutrients to the brain right which will really be created because there was even not enough nutrients in itself it's not the vitamins the minerals that are required for brain function especially what there's this supplement that we give a lot to you omega threes right then let's look at number five this subtype is characterized by head trauma so that's the one that those uh, people suffer you saw the movie on that where you have head trauma where you play soccer you play american football and the brain suffers substantial injury which causes neuroinflammation in the brain okay so you can read all of this and then you can also look at the genetics so let's move to the next page any questions so far yes they don't have what no they have they just don't recognize they have it Yeah, but it, but it takes a long time to develop. No, it does. Yes, that's why. Do you know the? Have you? Do you see the levels of Alzheimer's in our society? Not just Alzheimer's, dementia, depression, all those things that are brain-driven. You can see the rise is significant. Yeah, and you're more younger people. Yes, it's creeping on us slowly. <coughs> so when Bredesen was doing his research he discovered 35 mechanisms that are at work in cognitive degeneration look at that long list so a lot of people think that oh we can just do a couple of tests you know the, the silly thing that western medicine does is that oh let's go do an mri <laughs> oh, or some imaging right and then we will see whether you get it or oh, let's do a PET scan but we know that cognitive degeneration is actually an underlying metabolic illness so let's look at the different things that have broken down that we try to repair and we do significant testing for most of these things you don't know but you now have notes so you can go find them and understand what they are right so let's go quick down to something for example bdnf brain derived nerve factor we actually have a supplement for that i'll quickly go down homocysteine number nine we have a supplement for that right glutathione number 16 number 17 antioxidants right increase gaba I know that uh, Dr. Uh, Prasant prescribes that for most of you. Optimized hormones. That's why we also do your hormone testing. Right? Vitamin D, mitochondrial function. We can just go on and on looking at all these things. That is why the, the amount of diagnosis that we do for every patient who comes in is comprehensive. Because you need to make sure that the architecture for homostasis Beate, what is homostasis? homeostasis homeostasis equilibrium okay, why am I choosing equilibrium than the word that you gave me? that captures everything <laughs> but but you know we don't know how the body achieves equilibrium we do not know medical science has not answered that question yet but the body knows how to achieve equilibrium and that's what we call homostasis the body self-regulates it knows how to bring itself back that's why we fall asleep because the body says now we need to make this body go to sleep because we have other work to do 
we and then we keep struggling you know little kids who don't want to sleep they fall asleep then they open their eye and then finally they collapse right where is that coming from is that act controller saying sleep time and then around 4 a.m you're awake what wakes you up the controller says it's wake up time or you need to go pee right when your controller is not well developed you just pee in your nappy <laughs> in your diapers right but once your controller is working if you don't go pee you're not gonna sleep isn't it because the controller says you need to go pee or poo before you can sleep right so homostasis is a very interesting indicator if you all watch yourself how your body self-regulates and manages itself we don't know where that control center is there is some speculation that we do know where it is but nobody really knows where that organizer is the conductor and who it is right whether it's us or it's the bacteria right there's some questions whether it might be actually bacteria that's running us there is some theories around that that it is the bacteria that runs us that we are not really us <laughs> because there's more bacteria inside us than us so almost what 4.5 billion all right so let's turn to the next page so um Bredesen developed what he calls the six principles and they are there for you to read but I just wanted you to look at the next page where we, he gives you some ideas on the different things that we do and that Dr. Yi does in building you a roadmap for therapy right and there are a lot of different things there we organize it for you but I'm just giving you this list so you actually understand uh, how he then drives all of that so on that previous page he said the first goal is simply not to normalize metabolic parameters but rather to optimize them what are metabolic parameters this is big English right what are what do you think they are metabolic parameters Um, what's metabolic it's like how fast a person can burn you, you you mean metabolic no no it has to do with how we deal with with food nutrition oh. yes yeah. right nutrients mm -hmm. so that's the architecture so when we look at the parameters that's when you start talking about the optimization right how quickly we burn how efficiently we burn so once we start looking at metabolic parameters we are talking about efficiency and effectiveness right the quality and the speed and the outputs <coughs> from it right and you know that all of us are challenged by our metabolic parameters right getting the right foods in and optimizing utilizing those foods appropriately right then he looks at the issues of imbalance and the underlying issues of chronic illnesses so let's talk about a couple of these things and then we'll move to the next picture right so the first thing in the therapeutic system 100 he talks about an optimized diet I'm not gonna go into details about that but he just looks at things like low glycemic what's the meaning of low glycemic yes uh, no well yeah low carbohydrate sugar load right then he talks about low inflammatory give me some examples of high or low inflammatory foods sugar is inflammation food and uh probably blueberries Gl gluten yes so it's good and uh, sorry go ahead yes it's an inflammatory food uh, why would these foods be inflammatory what do we mean by inflammatory foods uh, the foods that cause inflammation <laughs> i like that yes but, but 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 we eat a lot of foods that are inflammatory cause some kind of reaction in the body mm -hmm. in the process of digestion. yeah but, but but why would we eat foods that are inflammatory 
Yeah, yeah, that's yeah one. But there's another big reason why we would eat foods that are inflammatory. Just used to those. Uh, and sometimes we take those. No, no, we take those sometimes so we can trigger and weaken our immune system. So go look at it. So in most cultures, every culture has foods that are inflammatory. Kimchi, fermented foods are inflammatory. Yes, because it, well, they are because in they, they help you build, but they're inflammatory. They go and raise the immune system and cause a lot of trouble. So fermented foods are inflammatory, they, but they're good for us. So inflammatory foods are not all bad, right? Inflammatory foods. So it's important, guys, that you go look at this, and then we also want to look at low grain diets. Right? That's the complex carbohydrates. Right? And then um, th there's this concept of autophagy. I know it's a big word and there's Nobel Prizes around that in the last year. Uh, and ketogenesis by fasting for 12 hours each night, including 3 hours before bedtime. The aim is to reduce insulin and A beta, beta, beta levels. Right? so that the body can clean up all the dead cells and clean up everything that's going on, right? Then they spoke about reduced stress, right? And which stress, right? We've spoken about the four attributes that contribute to stress. What are those four attributes again? I'm looking at people who've been in my class a long time. What are the four attributes of stress? Sugar. Yeah, glycemic control. What else? No. Yes, inflammatory markers. There's sleep, circadian control. Okay. And then there's perceived stress. Yes. So, perceived stress, which is the stress we all talk about, is a really small fraction of stress. One of the big ones is sleep. And so if you're not sleeping eight hours a night, you're actually building up a lot of chronic stress, right? That's why they tell us to optimize sleep. And if you're not sleeping eight hours a night, they want you to take things that would support you and make sure you do not have sleep apnea. How many people here have sleep apnea? How many people don't know whether they have sleep apnea? <laughs> What is sleep apnea? You actually stop breathing. And one of these things that we are using tells measures how many times you stop breathing a night. And most people who have used it are shocked at how many times they stop breathing. Most people think they don't stop breathing at all. But if you use this and monitor your sleep, it begins to show you how many times you actually stop breathing at night. Which means how many times you could have actually died. <laughs> right? Sorry, I'm going very deep into that. So then they talk about exercise. And number six, they talk about engaging brain training and stimulation. So that's why you tend to find out that a lot of people spend a lot of time learning either a new language or start doing math and calculus or start playing what is that Japanese game? Sudoku? Alright. Or something that is really gonna stimulate your brain. Most of us have dead brains. We cannot even focus yet to anything. We are distracted persistently because we have not really learned how to really focus and keep our attention. So this attention deficit issue is a big sickness also coming from neurodegeneration. Restlessness, a lack of ability to just stay focused, to concentrate, to pay attention, right? I remember when I went to primary school in Africa, everybody would sit quietly at their desk until break time. I go here into the high schools and nobody can sit still for five minutes. It's the diet. 
everybody's crazy right so let's look at homocysteine we spoke about that we looked at your b12 how many people here are taking b12 how many people know that they have the b12 mutation or not they don't teach that in high school here right what did they teach in high school sorry <laughs> And that your uh, HSCRP, what was our HSCRP again? I spoke about it earlier. It's the big biomarker for inflammation. And when we do your blood test, we can actually measure that. That's the C-reactive protein. It is something that's released when there is significant inflammation. Then we look at how you optimize insulin and so the fasting diet is really another way of you bringing insulin management under control so if you fast that intermittent fasting that most people are now practicing where you don't eat in the dark hours you only eat when the sun is up and you're optimizing at least from 12 some people are taking it to 15 some to 16 or 18 hours Right, where you're eating only between 10 a.m. and 4 or 5 p.m. So that's when a lot of people are eating and all the research points to how optimized, in spite even of how much calories you eat, how that's very good for you. Then there is the issue of optimizing your hormones. You know, most Americans don't even know where their hormonal levels are. Um, and why is that? Beate, why do most Americans don't know where their hormone levels are? I was going to say because they outsource that information to their doctors. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, does the doctor care where your hormonal levels are? Really exactly. And if your hormones levels are not appropriately at the right level, it affects your overall performance. We are almost our hormones. Yes, especially as we have an emerging issue with uh, erectile dysfunction and low sperm count. That's hormonal. Yes, it's all hormonal. Okay, and we are going to be offering that. And then there's the whole issue of GI health, probiotics and prebiotics. Um, everybody here is taking probiotics and prebiotics. Not yet. No, you should. It's very important for your GI health to manage your inflammation. Because why would GI, why would probiotics and prebiotics optimize your GI health? If you notice, there are topics I keep coming back to again and again. Right, Prasan? I know you're bored already. But I keep coming back to these topics again and again and again. Why would prebiotics and probiotics correct and and create that balance and then the prebiotics do what? That's probiotics. What do the prebiotics do? What are prebiotics? Before you take the prebiotics, you're supposed to take the prebiotics. Guys, you need to remember it's fiber like metamucil or the things that you take why do we need fiber in our stomach to feed the bacteria and optimize metabolic digestion it's a very simple and very important process so fiber feeds the bacteria yes it doesn't really push things through it does too but that is the key purpose okay. yes it creates that commensal environment that is optimized for metabolism it breaks the food down, which is very important. If not, almost all that you're eating is coming straight out without being properly absorbed. So it's very important that you take, you, you take your digestimes, you take your prebiotics, you take your probiotics, so that even if you're not taking the other things that we give you, you really want to daily have an optimized GI function. It's really important, guys. This is like 
the core thing. I think we need to emphasize this percent. This is something that is mandatory. How do I know if I take a We gave you enough. <laughs> uh, and you cannot take too much of it. It has to, it's a slow process because it has to heal slowly. You see, the body is like the sun on the seaside. You can't build castles in a day. It's slowly, slowly, slowly. <coughs> there is no quick medication that we can give you and just builds your GI tomorrow. That's not how it works, Next right? Time, you know, I will show the strength of the providers. Yes. So, so we, we, we give you very powerful ones, yes. right? 50 billion, 100 billion, 250 billion. That's a lot. Right? So we, we put a lot of you on a really high dose of probiotics to create that balance. You take that every time you eat? No, you take every day. It's on your schedule. You take every day, but the, the digestives you take every time you eat to just support and help with the digestive system. It's very important, guys. Very, very important. Apart from our omega 3s for brain function, right? Your GI architecture is a very important thing, right? So I'm just walking you through this. Then the next one I'm looking down there is vitamin D3. How many people are taking D3? We, Preston, we need to do a lot of work with him. So, D, so you're supposed to take vitamin D2 and vitamin D3? Yes. And high Yeah, more, more normally it's all integrated into the D that we give, the D and the K, right? Yes. Yes, it's all in there. Yes. Mine are specific. Mine say D3 or D2. Yeah, but I think that typically do D2, D2 come D3. D3. It's yes. D3, is D3, is D3, D3 is manufactured, yeah. D3 is manufactured. D3 is what you get. Okay. All right. I hear that you spend 20 minutes in the sun and you get enough vitamin mm. D. That's not true. Mm -hmm. Except you were naked. Yeah, I mean, well, <laughs> I, 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 I was going to do a shirt off this for these. But you know, like in India, right, if you see those guys in the village, they, they just wear a little t-shirt and they're out in the sun all day, right? But here, there's no way you could do that. And you don't have the time and we were busy doing other things. Um, then let's go down to number 18, optimize antioxidants, right? We're giving them high-powered ones, right? Uh, I think some of you have just been put on MitoQ. That and CoQ10, which really is to provide mitochondrial energy, it's really high powered, right? It's really, really important because we all know now that most of the challenges to a lot of chronic illness has to do with enhancing the mitochondria, the energy of the mitochondria. Why is the mitochondria very important? Students. It's the, it's the workhorse, it's the where energy is created. No, where energy is created. The ATP factory, right? For Krebs cycle, right? It's the ATP factory, that's where energy is created, right? Then they say op optimize zinc, and they say number 20, look at this, most people don't know that. Ensure nocturnal oxygenation. Actually, when you <coughs> use this machine, it's like an oximeter, and there's one that you also use in your finger. It measures the percentage of oxygen that your blood is absorbing. And last time, one other person who was using it was looking at the measure, was around 88%. And then she started drinking more water before she went to bed, and it's increased to about 95%. So that level of oxygenation to the brain when you're sleeping is really, really important. You understand, guys? If you listen, we haven't talked about any medication here. But deeper, so that you can go into that place where autophagy and macrophages can actually do their work. Right? Then exclude heavy metal toxicity, right? That's why we do the urine test for toxicity because that's a big constraint, right? When we look at the causes of illness. 
right? So that's a big challenge there. So let's move forward quickly. Pam. Yes. Uh, MCT effects. Yeah, that's uh, the the fats from avocado or different oils. What you're saying, it's just the oil. Yeah, it's a very good thing. Okay. Yes. Yeah. What did they say? Optimize, right? Yeah, they say MCT effects, coconut oil or axona. Yes, so uh, those oils, like avocado oil, coconut oil, they're very... Uh, olive oil only in the cold. Like for cold salads, but it has to be original olive oil. Because organic, sorry, virgin. Because most of the olive oil sold in America is fake. So you want the Greek olive oil or something. If you can find it, yeah. that's very expensive oil. I have a thousand trees, olive trees in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to send you something. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, they are, yes, a lot of the olive oil in America is fake. You know how Americans like cheap shit, right? So they go to Costco <laughs> and buy fake <laughs> olive oil and feel well, good now. about it. <laughs> oh, yes, and it's very expensive. So a bottle yeah. of virgin would be like Fifteen twenty dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Then you know you are in the right place, and typically it's in those specialty shops like Sprouts or places like that. Yeah, it will not be in Costco. Yeah. I'm not sure about the Yes, that glass yes, green. green. Yes, yeah, must. You're gonna lose everything. Correct. He's That's right. It must be in the glass. Yeah. It's very okay. So this diagram just shows you the bacteria crossing that barrier. And where does that bacteria come from? How many people here drink filtered water every day? Yes. How many of you go to the restaurant, you just take the water and just drink? Uh, what's the quality of that water? How many of you use ice in restaurants? Have you seen what they're doing with the eyes when they take the eyes and put it in your glass? <laughs> yeah, when you're in, yeah, you do hot water if you're in restaurants. Yeah, at least boiling water is a good thing because the point is that the eyes comes with a lot of microbes. The water quality is already bad, and only 35% of American men wash their hands after they use the bathroom. <laughs> but that is just the fact. <laughs> that is the fact. Yeah. So, do you see where these things come from now? Are we yeah. clear? Yeah. And then your salad. You don't know the salad. I love the salad and the salmon. <laughs> I always have the chicken salad. You don't know whether they wash the vegetables, right? Because they were in a hurry because you wanted to eat quickly and leave, right? So you can read all that stuff there. So let's go to the next slide. It's just a slide that really goes into a lot of deep details, right? And, and what I wanted to show you was the connection with gut microbiota. And coming down here, neurodegenerative diseases, and then you see what they are there. Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, all those things that it shows. It doesn't include the others. But you see the deep chemistry driven by neuronal factors, by endocrine pathways, and immunological signals with all the attack that leads to inflammation. What is apoptosis? Autophagy, but you were close. It's cell death. Yes, cell death. Yes, it's cell death. Uh, I mean, you can use my brain as that dictionary would serve. <laughs> Autophagy is what you were describing. It's also really organized. And then we have all of those things happening, right? Because you see the um, the. Homeostasis 
has to kill some cells. Why does it have to kill cells? There would be too many of them. To That's one. And what happens when there are too many of them? <laughs> they cause cancer, yeah. yeah. Uh, but why else should cells be killed? Exactly! Isn't that what happens to us too? <laughs> we're killed because we're old. So that's why, and how long does a cell live? No. No. Seven years. Most cells will live that long, on average. So every seven years, your body is new. Does it do it all together, all the cells? No, if it did it, then you would disappear and reappear. <laughs> They're always in transition. Some have, so some die immediately, some die in 10 years. So there is this overall replacement strategy by the, by the conductor. Today you die. Everything is replaced. Yes, everything is replaced. Yes, and they are totally replaced, yeah. Well, well, not the whole organs. I'm talking about cells now. <laughs> no, 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 but within, within uh, two, three years, the whole thing pretty much uh, go through the... Yes. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, but, let, but let's talk about something very important here. So this whole process is called senescence. The process of how cells, they're active, and then they go through the death cycle. Something happens as they're going through the death cycle. At that point, some of them get triggered either by genetic underlying risk or toxicity or nutrient deficiency and they become cancerous. So we all have cancer cells every day. What happens when they become cancerous? More and more of them become cancer. No. Something happens. When they become cancerous, the master notices they are misbehaving and deploys the macrophages to kill them which your immune system why doesn't your immune system kill all of them that's the hiding techniques but that's not the main reason but that's one of the reasons they develop this ability to hide and look like normal cells but it's because your immune system is distracted in your gut by the God. That is his primary purpose, oh, okay. to deal with the God architecture. That is its number one job. And if you have a lousy God, then it is distracted. It cannot deal do its other side jobs, which is to clean up aberrant cells, stubborn cells. This is a very key issue on cancer, guys. It's a very key issue. That's why we keep going back to the God. If you don't stabilize your God, then your immune system, it doesn't matter how much immunocore we give you, your immune system is compromised. Because the inflammation, the chronic inflammation and the neuroinflammation means that the immune system is running overload. So anything new that shows up, they don't have enough soldiers to deploy. It's like another war on the Western Front. Right? <laughs> we are out of troops. After our troops have been doing three or four uh, rounds in Iraq and Afghanistan, right? We are tired, right? So finally slide and then we'll talk about one of our good uh, supplements. So this is just a summary slide of everything that we've been talking about. Harnessing the power of microbiome assessment tools as part of your neuroprotective nutrition and lifestyle medicine interventions, right? This is really the core of our practice. So everybody down here, we are really, this is the big issue you got. So if there was one thing that we are really critical on, this is it. Because you can see the big impact that it has on everything else. We can look at your immune system later on, 
and create the connectivities but we thought that neurodegeneration and the gut connection is a very very important issue for you to really start taking note of so all the supplements that we're giving you you can forget some some of the time but not your probiotics or your digestimes or your omega 3s because of the new neurodegenerative and if you're not taking them good luck we'll see you on the other side <laughs> right <laughs> okay. do you need to go yeah okay then that's fine okay. we'll see you next time all right go ahead And it comes from that. It's an overcompressed immune system. So that a lot of infections and a lot of other things now are invading the overall body. So autoimmune is really a spectrum of illnesses. It's not one thing. And really it's the invasion of all these things, especially the infections and toxicity those two big issues so and then it shows up as fibromyalgia it shows up as this or as that it's just a host of issues but at its core is cleaning up that and have this shown in a lot of cases when you clean it homostasis begins to return and the body starts functioning normally again that when autoimmune is like your immune system being overactive and then start attacking some other parts of the body? Well, 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 I don't think that it starts attacking other parts of the body. It's, joints and yeah, but the joints, no, it's because of deficiency at the core of it. It's not that your immune system is attacking or it's trying to attack or it's overwhelmed. And now, for example, like with the cancer cells, when we do chemotherapy, the cancer cells hide and start behaving like normal cells. And if you, the uh, immune system is over deployed, right? You start killing friendly troops, <laughs> right? Friendly fire. friendly fire, is that what they call it? Friendly fire. Right? And so it's overreacting. And so what you want to do is really to normalize it by reducing your toxicity over your toxic load and really repairing the gut architecture. Is that making sense? So there is this product that we just got. I've included a copy of it in the last page for you. Uh, it's called Mitocore. So let's look at the this product. It's a very important product from uh, Auto Molecular. So it works at the mitochondrial level look at the different things that it's doing free radical ATP so at the foundation it's had micronutrient essentials for oxidative phosphorylation that requires adequate nutrition now I know that when you read these papers every word is almost like overwhelmingly challenging and medical but if you give up on it then you're gonna outsource your life and your health to those doctors and most of them are not even reading this right number two the ignition the power trial of combining acetylcarnitine alpha lipoic acid and n-acetylcysteine which are combinations that we tend to give you in other capsules but in this case it's integrated in the powder then the protection the bioactive phytonutrients and you can see all the things that it contains Turn on the next page. Uh, I'm going to finish by just exploring this concept of the energy paradox. I did mention earlier that mitochondrial energy, or what they call oxygenation of the mitochondria, is really at the core of cancer. It's one of the theories of cancer, the metabolic theory of cancer. So let's look at this and get a deep understanding of it. Cellular energy production is a delicate balance. So think about if we didn't have any energy. <laughs> right? We would be like snakes on the ground, right? But 
where a mitochondria generates 90% of the body energy supply. Where is the mitochondria again? Every cell. Every cell has a mitochondria. And 90% of the free radical burden. Increased stress. Poor nutrition. What are negative lifestyle factors? No sleep. I like it. No, sleep. Yeah, no exercise. No, sleep. no friends. No alcohol. <laughs> you know, no. Lots of alcohol. Lots of alcohol. And exposure to toxins, right? No filtered water, eating everything you can find, breathing all the air on the freeway. Smoking. Yes, alter, they alter mitochondrial function, tipping the balance towards what? Free radical production. And we know those free radicals. Are they our friends or not? No. Why are they not our friends? <laughs> because they are Al Qaeda. <laughs> well, yeah. Why are they? Not, why are they not our friends? <laughs> what is oxidation? So those free radicals, tell us, Casey, what are free radicals? molecules you see they are volatile molecules they are like casey volatile they damage proteins nucleic acids and lipids this three why are these three things important they're important in cell building in proteins in life this is the essence of life Causing cellular injury. Oh, I love that word. Cellular injury and accelerated aging. Do you see this product? I know most of you are going to buy it. Do we have enough? I don't want them to be a rush on this product. When the mitochondria malfunction due to free radical induced stress, energy production plummets and cell function declines. When you don't have energy, this is what happens. Look at the vicious cycle of mitochondrial decline. Right? It starts with uh, the triggers of decline, stress, poor nutrition, toxins, aging. Then it has decreased efficiency by the rise of oxidative stress, free radical production, and re reduction of oxidative phosphorylation, which is good. We want more of that. Then it leads to damage, mitochondrial DNA corruption. It's like liberals corrupting uh, Republicans, right? Lipid oxidation, very bad. Those radicals are now taking over the lipids and the proteins. And then it leads to what we call dysfunction. Very challenging. Decreased cellular energies and underlying cause for many health challenges. Emerging research continues to highlight the importance of targeted nutritional strategies for boosting energy production and preserving mitochondrial function to enhance health. This was demonstrated in the following double-blind placebo control study, which used immune vitality as a marker of mitochondrial health. And you can see what happens over 12 weeks in terms of the count in terms of nutrients and the immune vitality what's immune vitality a strong immune system. yes thank you 
and increasing immune and when you have a strong immune system how does it show up in your life you don't get sick. correct you yes you heal faster you don't get sick you don't fall prey to all the things that are playing games around you because we are always surrounded by toxins and infections and right what they call them oh yeah doctor no one was calling them low grade infections you know what are low grade infections they're, what are they they are the infections that are left after you've taken antibiotics they, 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 they just don't go away right UTI candida all those things they're very very dangerous long term they get into your brain. Really? Yes. That's probably what the value of the Yes. Correct. Okay. How was this? It was good. It's just so informative. Uh, no, there's a price for that. If you get the fifth one, we give you a mic to call. What's the fifth one I'm listening? Is there a discount on this value? Uh, yes, because you attended class today, okay. there's a 20% discount. Right. <laughs> I do? I wow, my, the I guys are challenging me. <laughs> they say 10%. They say 20 is too high. I submit because, you see, I'm the servant of the people. I'm not the leader. <laughs> you can take a coupon and get higher okay. discount. Okay. Um, any questions before we close tonight? It's all about nutrients. It's so amazing. Not all about nutrients. Well, I mean, that you, I mean, you deal with it through nutrients. Yes. Yeah. But, but that's why we also emphasize air quality, yeah. water quality, food right. quality. Right? We supplement because most of us are too busy to eat well. We know our underlying genetic risk so we can cover it and then we really want to manage infections so if you have infections you really want to detox 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 so we create a regular daily and a three-month schedule for that so you clear it you keep clearing you keep clearing right it's very important so that at some point because once you keep having candida UTIs and all these things it means there is residual let me go back to the word low grade infections <laughs> they don't sound like a big thing right but they're just they're hammering simmering like Ayurveda cooking they're simmering and cooking you to death right any questions I want to applaud you for your participation uh, now there's going to be a test <laughs> <laughs> Have a good evening, guys. <laughs> uh, uh,